It's intriguing that such feather-light insects can use their wings for communication as well as flight. The bond is sealed when he seizes his partner by the neck. Two pairs of claspers at his hind end grip a matching depression behind the female's head. The male's claspers and the female's neck fit together like a key in a lock. Rivals can rarely pull them apart. Coupled together in this way, they can fly perfectly in tandem, something no other insects can do. Their mating, too, is unique. The male's mating organ is at the front of his body under the base of his wings, but his sperm, as in all insects, is produced at the tip of his tail. Curling his body, he pumps the sperm from back to front. of her own, creating the well-known dragonfly mating wheel. This was first described more than 200 years ago, but it's only recently been understood. The mating of dragonflies is even more complex than it looks. In good weather, the female can mate for several days with different males and can lay several clutches of eggs. Thus she carries a good deal of sperm. A new male drives out competing sperm with this powerful movement before introducing his own. A look inside shows what happens in detail. The female below has a large mating receptacle with two sperm sacs. The eggs will eventually pass through this channel, the oviduct. The male's mating organ with two extensions at the tip is well inside the female's receptacle. The sperm inside is from an earlier mating with another male. The male's first job is to expel this foreign sperm. Only when the mating receptacle and the sperm sacs are nearly empty does the male inject his own. The next time the female lays eggs, it will be his sperm that fertilizes them. When this process was